Our scripture reading for this evening comes from Luke's Gospel, the 8th chapter. Glory to the Lord. Jesus said, No one, after lighting a lamp, hides it under a jar or puts it under a bed. He puts it on a lampstand so that those who enter may see the light. For nothing is hidden that will not be disclosed, nor is anything secret that will not become known and come to light. Then, pay attention to how you listen. For to those who have, more will be given, and from those who do not have, even what they seem to have will be taken away. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. Christ. <laughs> yeah, it's still oh, look, that's still there, too. Okay. Don't worry about it. So it was a Friday night and I loaded the car up with some of my friends and we headed to the high school football stadium. We had heard some rumors, rumors that we were careful not to let our parents hear because we desperately still wanted to go. We had heard some rumors that what had happened on Tuesday might happen again on Friday. You see, it was the middle of April in 1999. Tuesday, two gunmen had walked into Columbine High School in Littleton, Colorado, and took the lives of a bunch of people in the school there. We had heard that at the football field that Friday night, they were going to have a candlelight vigil. And so my friends and I made plans to go. We got into the stadium. They gave everybody a candle. I don't remember much about what the speakers that night said. They weren't particularly eloquent as far as I remember. But what I do remember is that when it came time to start lighting other candles, to start lighting the candles that they had given everybody on the way in, that by the time everybody had their candle there on the football field, it was just as light as if it was a home game. That there in the days after a tragedy that would turn the name of that high school into basically a synonym for mass violence, That somehow there that night, being together with other people, sharing hope, leaning on each other, gave us some strength to get through. The candles were kind of fragile. They didn't stay lit super well in the wind. But the thing that happened over and over again is that as the wind blew out, my candle, the person next to me, theirs probably stayed lit, and I was able to relight it. That happened dozens of times over the course of the night, probably hundreds, by the, maybe even thousands by the time you multiplied it by everybody who was there that evening. And that's the thing about light, about candlelight, about fire in that little controlled way that you have on the end of your hand. It seems so fragile, and yet the more people you have gathered around, the more durable it somehow is. And in that way, the, the little candles that we held became a kind of a metaphor for what many of us were going through. 
that when we felt our lights going out, we were able to lean on those who were there with us in the stadium. Taking turns being strong and being weak. Taking turns believing and standing defiantly and just weeping and hoping. That was a day that we remembered and recognized and, and felt with our, with our own bodies that we are given to one another. That we are given to one another to support and to strengthen and to defend, to, to lean on one another when times are tough. Because that's how God designed us. In this congregation and in many congregations across Christianity, when someone is baptized, one of the things that we do is we give that person a candle. Not because we expect that they're going to keep that physical candle burning for their entire lives. Obviously, that wouldn't work. But as a sign and as a reminder that we are inheritors of this call that Jesus has given the world to be light and to share our light with others. Jesus, when he's describing what it's like to follow him, what it's like to live as a person of faith in the world, he tells his followers that when somebody lights a candle, they don't put it under a bushel, they don't put it in a jar. They don't cover it. They don't slide it under the bed. And at first, I always thought that was kind of a weird thing to do with your candle. But the more I think about it, and as I was teaching this scripture to our Vacation Bible School kids this week, the thing that dawned on me was that if I took an open flame, if I took a candle and I... I tried to put it under a wicker basket. That wicker basket's not going to fare too well. It's going to catch fire. It'll be destroyed. The same with the bed. Now, I'm not sure about the flammability of today's, like, memory foam beds. But Bible scholars tell us that the beds of Jesus' day, the, the few of them that were suspended in any way, were often uh, sort of basically like pillowcases that have been stuffed with straw or hay or, or something like that. I don't think that would fare too well having fire underneath it for very long either. And I think that brings us to the, to the other part of what Jesus says in this passage that, that seems kind of ominous and terrifying. And he says that nothing that is hidden will stay hidden. Nothing that relies on lies or deceit will be able to, to continue or endure forever. Because the thing about all of that deceit, the thing about those who would try to hang on to power or build up their own money or their own influence or their own prestige is that that becomes a never-ending hole that always needs more to be poured into it in order to be satisfied. And sooner or later, that all goes up in smoke. Nothing grows forever. And so Jesus gives us this incredible image of being the church and being a light. Being a light that is there to help others, being a light that's there to relight another candle that's gone out, but also to be the light that exposes wrongdoing, to be the light that refuses to allow lies to continue to grow, being the light that says we're going to stand in truth and we're going to trust that the truth will set us free. This is, this is at once 
good news and terrifying news, and it depends on where you're situated in life as to how you hear it. If you have built your life on collecting possessions, if you have built your life on getting richer, if you have built your life on being more powerful and more influential, then this comes as a prophetic word of warning. But if you have found yourself in a place where the lies that someone else tells threaten your ability to be free, if somebody else's collection of power or influence makes it hard for you to live, then this must be incredibly good news. That lies will be shown to be lies, that deception will not be able to stand, and that those who hoard will have what they have hoarded redistributed. Dear friends, you and I have work to do. And if it depended entirely on us, we would certainly fail. Our lights would go out and the world would be worse off for it. But time and time again, God's Holy Spirit sweeps into our lives and relights the flame of faith. It draws us beyond ourselves and calls us to care for and to share with one another. Friends, we need each other. Just as I needed my friends on the football field that day, so I need you today. And you need each other. And this congregation needs St. Mary's and Trinity. We need one another for days like this. Because it's the Holy Spirit that calls us. It's the Holy Spirit that gathers us. And we need to be able to hear that spirit from one another. I can think of no better way to do that than what we're doing here together right now. Gathering around scripture, singing songs of faith, and being given a small bite of bread and a little sip of wine that are foretastes of a feast that is to come that reminds us that the day is coming when all will be made right, when hope will be restored, and when the light of faith will shine across the entire world and everyone will know the name of Jesus. And until that day, I have you, and you have me. So let's pray. Good and gracious God, you have shaped us and formed us as your own. Open our eyes to see the need around us. Open our tongues to speak words of hope and truth. Open our hearts to love as you have loved. And set our feet free to carry your message to every corner of our lives and of this hurting world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you.